What do you think about when you hear the word Rwanda? Poverty? Conflict? Giant monkeys? Sure, all those things exist, but they aren't what impressed me the most in the country. In this video, we will explore the top five culture shocks you will experience when you visit Kigali, Rwanda. This video is sponsored by Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. We will talk more about that later. Number one, the organization. Kigali gets a lot of hype for being the cleanest city in Africa, and while the streets in some areas can be strikingly pristine, that's actually a small part of what makes Rwanda so unique. What shocked me the most is the organization. While there's still work to be done, some parts of Rwanda are beginning to look like a first world country. Check out the new car-free zone downtown. This area has lightning fast Wi-Fi for free, and the paving is of the same quality you would see in the United States or Japan. The electricity runs 24 seven. The roads are well-made and pothole free, and every Rwandan has universal health insurance for just $2 per year. Number two, the ladies. What if I told you that this painting is not an exaggeration? Would you believe me? Well, believe it or not, many Rwandan women really have this shape and it's completely natural. Speaking of natural, most of them don't wear weaves or hair extensions either. If you're a foreign lady who is used to being the center of attention in Africa, that probably won't happen in Rwanda. And just because you're in Africa doesn't mean you should dress like you're on a safari. Rwandans seem to take their appearance very seriously and if you go out looking sloppy, you will be judged. Okay, so you're saying the clothing is different. How so? Mm, there was, okay, like here we, we, we wear the feet, feet here, okay. but they are <laughs> no problems. Like. Okay, so basically your clothing fits better if it looks better. Okay. okay. Yeah. So black Americans don't dress as well as Rwandans. Yeah. Okay. So Rwandan women don't care about money. Yeah, they don't care. I think you're lying. <laughs> no, they don't care. Someone they care, other no. What about you? Do you care about money? Yeah, of course. Okay, so when you're dating and the bill comes, do you pay the bill? Yes, of course. When I have money, I'll be for him. Have you ever, okay, so you, when, when you date a man, you pay the bill? Yes, of course. Are you sure about that? <laughs> yes, of course. Do your partner's finances. Is that important to you? Like money, is that important in a relationship? No. No. I just want that distrust and love. Okay. Yeah. Rwandan men are extremely proud of their women and think they're the best in the world. But as they say, Kigali shares, and young people don't date each other as much as you might expect. <laughs> Maybe guys are worried about spending money, or they have too many options, but the end result is that there's some surprisingly beautiful women who are single. So, do you, are you single? Do you have someone? No, I'm single. 
Okay. Yeah. What if one of my viewers, who's a black American, as you're a very beautiful woman, right? Thank what you. What if he says that he wants to, to, to date you? Would you say yes? No. no. The first word, first of all, is the love. When when I love her, I can say yes. Okay. When there's no, I can say no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Number three, the manners. Speaking of dating, it's easy to see why many Rwandan men prefer to stay single. It's less headache. Like most African countries, people in Rwanda can be very bad with time, which is surprising considering how orderly the formal aspects of the society seem to be. If you go on a date with a Rwandan chick, expect her to be at least one hour late if you are lucky, three hours if you are not. They also don't seem to realize anything is wrong with being late or make much effort to improve this bad habit. To me, this seems like a symptom of a much wider problem with bad manners in the country. Customer service, for example, can be shockingly bad. In my experience, when you walk into most restaurants and businesses, the staff doesn't even greet you. They just stare at you blankly as if they expect you to greet them first. A great example of this rude behavior can be found at the bar called Torino in Yami Rambo. Let me know in the comments if you have experienced this yourself. Rwanda has an incredibly judgmental society and many visitors will be struck by the amount of staring they get in the country. The people do this to anyone who seems different or who isn't conforming in one way or the other, but you won't know for sure what is going on because in Rwanda, people aren't very forthright about how they think or feel, and what is said or done on the surface level is often quite different from what is believed in reality. In Rwanda, people are they just cool down, they don't talk anything or say what they think mm -hmm. Yeah, to you. Out of everything on this list, this section is easily the roughest culture shock, but after several weeks you get used to the bad vibes and are struck by how different people from other African countries can be. You are making a document. You can, you can, you can interview Cameroonian students. Hello. Okay, so you guys are from Cameroon. Yes. What brings you to Kigali? We are there for for study. For study. <laughs> for study. Yeah. We are lawyers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We are lawyers. We are studying at South of the country, ILPD. So how do you find Rwanda? Rwanda is very nice, very nice. my friend. But Rwanda is only Kigali. Nice country. Out of Kigali is not the same thing. <laughs> okay. Have you been to other cities in Rwanda? Yes, yes. I've been to the east of the country. I've been to Nyanza. Mm. And now I've come here in Kigali. Okay. Preparing the bar exam. How long have you been here? We're in Rwanda or in Kigali? Uh, in Rwanda. I'm, I've been in Rwanda since December of last year, 2021. Okay. So yes, okay. I enjoy it very well. Okay. okay. Well, Thank nice you. to meet you guys. Okay, nice to meet you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Number four, the climate. You might think of Africa as a universally hot and sunny place, but that's not necessarily the case in Rwanda. Because of its high elevation, the country boasts a mild and temperate climate. I won't. Yeah. To put it simply, the temperature in Rwanda is perfect, ranging from 70 to 80 degrees almost every day, with some areas in the northern province getting even colder than that. Yeah.
Do you think we could get an interview with these people? They ask Maybe. They ask you money. Yeah, that's no problem. I'll give them a little. So, what do you want to interview them? Mural mm. Mizaneza. Do you speak English? English. Oh, yeah. That does speak English. Can you run that? Okay. How does he like? How do you like living in uh, Musanzi? Go Musanzi. Uh, I'm really Musanzi. Mezite. Eh, Musanzi. Eh, Nikeza. Go Kunzo Kuba. I don't know how Kunda. Okay. But he likes the place. Okay. Sawa. Most houses don't come with air conditioning or heating, which contributes to a very low construction cost in the country. Often, homes are made with a mud brick technique called rukarakara, which keeps the rooms cool during the day and warmer at night. A special clay is mixed with water and formed into bricks before being left out in the sun to dry. While this material is super popular in Rwandan villages, it is also common in the city of Kigali itself. When Rukarakara buildings are plastered with cement, you can hardly tell the difference. But Rwanda's climate isn't all good. The country is extremely rainy for most of the year. In fact, the only months I would recommend visiting are in June, July, and August, because the other months are so wet, you will just be stuck at home all day. Unlike in the United States, where people go about their day in rain or shine, Rwandans don't seem to have adapted to the rain whatsoever. It completely shuts down the country. Motorcycle taxis don't operate, people don't walk the streets, and you would hardly see anyone with raincoats or umbrellas. As soon as the rain starts, everyone scurries for shelter and stays there, sometimes for hours until the sky clears. This level of disruption is shocking for a country so inundated with rain. In rural areas, the disruption is even greater, and young people in the countryside often live extraordinarily boring lives, stuck at home for most of the year with nothing to do with their free time except for sleeping, drinking, and sex. Does size matter? Many Rwandan villagers say yes, but I'm not talking about the bedroom. I'm talking about America's largest injury law firm, Morgan & Morgan. With over 800 lawyers across America and 4,000 support staff available 24-7 to handle your case, Morgan fights to get their clients the best results. The best part? You pay nothing up front for their services. The fee is free unless they win. Getting started is easy. Just dial pound law from your cell phone or visit forthepeople.com. I've also included a link in the description for your free consultation. Now, back to the video. Number five, the nature. Rwanda is often called the land of a thousand hills, and its unique mountainous topography makes for some gorgeous natural scenery. Kigali is full of rooftop bars and restaurants that take advantage of the pretty view. The city is also very green, and it was made this way on purpose. Well, it all started in 2005 where everyone was supposed to plant a tree. And by cleaning the, the air, the, uh, I mean, the environment and everything, and by binding the plastic bags in 2008. So you had to plant a tree? Yes, when I was five years old. Awesome. <laughs> But if you want to fully appreciate Rwanda's natural beauty, then you have to leave the city and go to the rural areas of the country. 
Many tourists like to visit Musanzi in the northern province, known for its cool weather and endangered species of mountain gorillas. This year, I visited the gorilla naming ceremony, where they choose new names for the baby gorillas born in previous years. Let me finish this shot. Uh, starting with our first name of, for today is international football referee Salima Mukansanga. Let's give her a warm welcome. But Rwanda's natural beauty is about more than just wildlife. In the west of the country lies the coastal town of Giseni. You know, this city is nice. Where we enjoyed a riveting boat ride and visited coastal villages where we enjoyed fresh fish. We also visited a tea village with some of the most breathtaking natural scenery I have seen anywhere on earth. Over the next few videos, we will explore everything there is to see in Rwanda, both in Kigali and the other exciting cities I just mentioned. If this sounds like something you are interested in, please subscribe to the channel to stay up to date. I'll see you in the next one.